Hi and welcome back to the Low Level Devil Channel's Game Boy Emulator Development Series. In the previous videos, we worked on all aspects of the CPU emulation and tested and verified its functionality with some standard CPU test ROMs. Now, in this video, we're going to start with the process of emulating the PPU, starting with different types of PPU memory and reading and writing it, and even displaying some of the game tiles in a debug window. So let's get started. So first of all, I want to move over to our handy uh, pan docs and we'll look at the section on rendering. So let's see, down here is the rendering, on section 3. So particularly, I think we want to look at tile maps. There's a lot of good information in here and I'd suggest you read through it. Um, I'm not going to you know, read through it verbatim on here on this video, but primarily we want to uh, focus on some of this OAM data. So Sprite OAM RAM is, is a certain type of uh, <coughs> data that's held in RAM in the CPU, in the PPU, sorry. Um, so there's several aspects to it. There can be 40 sprites in RAM at a time. In the, uh, the Sprite um, attribute table, also known as OAM RAM is at this location in memory you know and there's 40 entries and they each kind of have this following uh, four byte setup. The byte 0 is the Y position then the X position then the tile index in the uh, map which is like a, um, a tile map in, in memory and byte 3 is the attributes flag so it has several different attributes um, about the individual uh, sprite and memory. So let's go through and just create a structure to hold this. So we'll start as a type def struct. We're going to make this a uh, OAM entry. So object attribute memory is what that stands for again. So we had the Y, the X, um, tile, which is the tile index and flags. So now these flags again is all these different bits here, um, and you know, and, and uh, yeah, right down here. So if I copy that and paste it into a comment down here, so we have it here for reference. Um, another way we can thing we can do instead of using this single byte for the flags is we can use these uh, bit fields. So I'll just create one for each of these. So F. So that first three bits is the color Game Boy palette number, and that's uh, three bits. So zero, one, and two. So then the next one is the let's see the tile VRAM number but this is color Game Boy only as well I'm not really gonna get into color Game Boy at this point maybe later in the series I'm not sure um, so we won't really use those for now but we need them there <clears throat> so bit 4 is that palette number we'll just call it PN then the we have the uh, X flip and Y flip this just tells if the, uh, you know, if the um, sprite should be flipped horizontally or, or vertically, and then last we have the background priority. Okay, so now we have those all as uh, one bit there. As a, so those are one, these take up one extra byte. Now let's go on and start our PPU context. So PPU context is going to hold, we have two types of memory, the OAM RAM, which is 40 of these OAM entries. And then we have the video RAM, which is 0x2000 bytes.
and then we should have some uh, functions here to read and write so we'll have OAM write takes a 16-bit address and an 8-bit value so then we'll have the PPU OAM read which just takes the address and returns the value and then we're also going to have one for VRAM so both of these will be written and read through the uh, bus same way we write read and write other peripherals so in their PPU OAM or VRAM read okay so now let me copy these and I'll put those in the uh, .c file let's see ppu.c is where we want to go okay now pasting those in here I'm gonna start with this ppu OAM write and if you remember we had that address value so we want to uh, take that into account when reading and writing so so if the address value is greater than or equal to FE00, we actually want to subtract that FE00 from it so that when we, uh, when we address our um, buffer, you know, we're just using the actual offset. So I'm going to convert our uh, OAM RAM to a byte array here so I can treat it like a byte array when I'm writing to it we need to create our context up here too there we go and then I'm just gonna simply uh, set the value of that byte array at that address now in OAM read we're gonna do essentially this same section up here except we're going to return P at address so that was simple enough all right, so let's see. For VRAM write, um, this one I'm going to always assume the address has that uh, offset added to it. So I'm just going to say VRAM at address minus zero x eight thousand equals value. The PP the OAM RAM and uh, read and write might be accessed through the DMA which won't be using that that uh the FE00 offset so that's why I did it differently for OAM RAM so now that we have those implemented let's add this header to the bus.c and I'll go through let's see this char map data yes this is our uh so we can remove this. This is our um, PPU VRAM data. So PPU VRAM read at address. Okay. So and then down here, let's find our OAM data. So that was our VRAM. Our OAM data is down here this section so we can remove all this and that's just going to return PPU OAM read at address and likewise we're going to do the same thing down here for the bus write So this section will be the PPU VRAM write address and value and down here is our OAM uh, write address and value. So now that we've made this small set of code changes, uh, let's go through and do a sanity check and make sure nothing is broken. So I'm going to go back to our build, clear, make, 
Okay, everything built fine. So let's go through and just run this uh, test again. We'll just do zero one special. And no issues, it's still running. Um, it's not doing anything different yet, but uh, just wanted to make sure uh, with a quick sanity check that everything still works. So now moving on, let's go back to the Pandocs and let's specifically look at the tile data under rendering. So a couple important points about this. First, the tile data is stored in VRAM at this location, 0x8000. Um, each tile takes 16 bytes. This is important. Uh, this defines data the yeah d data for 384 tiles. Um, each tile is 8 by 8 and has a color picture of uh, four colors, three in different shades of gray. Um, these are some different addresses where uh, we we would get the uh, item 0 through 127, 128 to 255. It can change based on these different flags which we won't get to yet. And let's see. Yeah, let's just go back into here and if we go into UI, what I want to do is start displaying some of this data just in a debug screen. So I'm just going to paste some stuff and run kind of fast here because the SDL stuff isn't really the point of this video. If you really want to know more about that, you can kind of research SDL more. So I'll just kind of keep this focused, what I'm really describing as um, anything related to the Game Boy emulation. So I'm just going to paste some code changes in here. I'll go quickly over them. We have 16 times 8 times scale because I want to actually be able to scale things larger and smaller. So I'm going to create a static variable up here called scale. I'll set it to 4 by default. So we're going to create this window based on uh, 16 by 8 because they're 8, uh, 8 pixels wide. And do 16 tiles by 32 tiles essentially. Then we have this debug te texture we're creating, passing in that renderer. And again, we're using this uh, 16 by 8 by uh, scale. And then I'm adding some space there, I think, for the width between the uh, between the tiles. I was going to display some maybe some black between the tiles. Alright, so moving on to that. Now what I'm going to do is get the position of that original window and set the position of this debug window to the right of it. So that's what this code here is specifically doing. Okay, so now moving on, we're going to create a couple of different, uh, a couple of new functions one is going to be update let's see we'll call it UI update so this will be called it's kind of like a public interface we're going to be calling this update debug window function from our UI update so this update debug window so what we want to do in here is kind of display all the tiles that get loaded eventually into the uh, OAM RAM section. So to start with, I'm going to paste some code in here. And I'll again just briefly kind of go over the parts that are uh, related to this. So we're essentially filling a rectangle at this F11111 as the color. It's, which is basically a really dark gray. <clears throat> so we're filling the whole screen as a dark gray. And then I'm going to have this value for the address, which is 0x8000. If you remember, that's the uh, start of that tile data. And now, now there's 384 tiles, remember. So we're going to actually... That's going to be say 16 yeah 24 by 16 so we're gonna 
kind of display them in that way. So we'll do y 0 to 24. So we're going to have 24 rows and 16 columns of tiles. And then for each of these, I'm going to call this function display tile, passing in the debug screen, adder tile num extra plus x times scale, y draw plus y times scale. And after we display each tile, we're going to update the x draw to the next location. Update the tile number. And outside of our x loop, we're going to update the y, y draw. And then set x draw to zero. This is some pretty kind of basic stuff for just displaying it like this. I'm pasting in this. Uh, different ways to render an SDL, updating this debug texture, pitch, the pixels of pitch, uh, clear, render copy, and then we present the renderer. And so now let's implement this display tile function. So this one will get actually more into how the Game Boy uh, tiles are set up. So display tile, yeah, I'm going to call it display underscore tile. Yeah, I'm trying to avoid using camel case in this. I'm, it's the uh, Java programmer in me doing that. So let's see, call this display tile. And display tile. So SDL surface, so this takes the surface, the address, which we we'll call start location, the tile num, and the X and the Y. Okay. So now to start with, we're going to create an SDL rect, and this is what we're going to use to actually display each pixel as we go along. I'm also pasting in the tile colors. So by default I have these tile colors, white, a light gray, a darker gray, and then black. So those are the four pixel values. So now I'm going to loop through from tile Y0 to tile Y is less than 16. So if you remember, there's 16 uh, bytes taken up by the uh, tile. Let's see, where are we at again? Um, so let me go down to this section. This displays, you know, each tile occupies 16 bytes, where each line is represented by 2 bytes. So each line is 2 bytes. So byte 0 and 1 are the topmost line, byte 2 and 3 are the second line. And it's a little difficult to grasp without looking at a sample. Down here it also explains a little more. You might want to read this for just for uh, some more info. But there's also a, a more visual explanation. So you, you see these two values would add together to make up the actual uh, values for the pixel. But let's look at this visual representation. So this talks about a sprite and the different bytes that are made up by it. So if we look at this tile, which is like a letter A, and a dot is, is the uh, clear, so 3 would be black I guess in our case and so if we look at these we have these two bytes make up this uh, 3333 three, three at the top these two bytes make up this second line these two bytes make up that third line so if we look at 1 and 1 makes 3 
0 and 1 is 2. We're looking at the binary values when we OR them together. 1 and 0 is 1 as a binary value. And these are the different uh, bits. So if, if you actually look down here and you, up, you, you can play around with different values for this. We're going to actually remove these values and put these values for this A in here. So if I take this 7, 6, or 7, C, 7, C, 0, C6, C6, 0, 0, 0, 0, F, E, C6, C6, 0, 0, C6, C6, and then three zeros. Now if we click and update this, then it displays that A that we have up here. So that kind of shows how you read those. These will all be in sequential order in a, uh, you know, in in the memory for a tile. So that's why we're kind of skipping. We're doing tile y plus equals two because for each line, each line will essentially be two bytes. So, so let's start. We're reading the first byte from bus read at start location plus tile num times sixteen because remember sixteen bytes per tile, plus the tile y, and now to get byte 2, we're essentially going to do the same thing, but we're going to grab the next byte, so tile y plus 1. So that'll give us the data for this line, and in order to uh, display it, we're going to loop through each of the bits backwards. So we're going to start at bit number 7, while well, bits greater than 0, bit minus minus. So a little bit of bit manipulation here. So we're going to grab the high bit. We're doing not not b1 and 1 shifted over by the bit number. Shifted to the left by 1, because that's going to be our high bit. And then similar for the low bit, but that's going to come from B0, or B2, sorry, without shifting over. So these two bits will make up that two-bit value that's going to be the color for the current pixel. And hopefully that makes sense. If you read through that uh, that article, it's, it's it'll make it a little clearer for you, possibly. So to get the color, we're going to or that high and low value, so that'll give us 0, 1, or 2, 0, yeah, 0, 1, 2, or 3 value. So now we're going to set up our rect that we're going to draw that pixel. So x plus the 7 minus the bit times scale, and then y is tile y divided by 2 times the scale. The width is going to be the scale, and the height is going to be the scale. So this will be the data for drawing that pixel. So to draw, then to draw that pixel, we're going to call SDL fill rect on the surface, the rect, the tile colors, and index color. So that's all we need to do to fill each of those for one tile. And now we'll take this UI update. Let's put that in the UI header. And let's see. Where do we need to update this? So that yeah, that'll be updated in our emu.c. Let's see, we want to put it down here, so we have our UI in it in the EMU run, so in our while not die loop, we'll just put it in there. We'll, we'll eventually make this a little more efficient, but right now we're just going to do that um, for each loop. So, uh, let's see, now let's include our bus.h since we used bus read and actually I forgot something here we need to add this debug screen 
here as well to um, create it with that cr create RGB service our RGB surface so that again takes that 16 by 8 by scale with that width spacer same as down there 32 for the 32 bit color and then a red green and blue index and alpha index so let's make that clear and let's run it again and now you can see on the right here's our debug window and we actually have uh, each of the individual tiles that got loaded into memory so uh, that's a good start for our uh, being able to actually see something from this but now if we run other things like uh, let's run Tetris for instance you see that Tetris isn't actually uh, displaying anything there and that's because the typical way for actually writing these uh, the data to the OAM RAM is to use uh, something called DMA or direct memory access so I'm going to create a DMA.h file it's actually not too hard to implement so let's start with uh, pragma once going to include the common dot h so a couple of functions we'll have here dma start and it takes a byte uh, we'll call that byte let's say start i think and then uh, we'll have dma tick because that's going to be a part of our cpu tick process and then a bool DMA transferring, which means is it transferring or not. So we'll create a DMA.C as well. Include that header. We'll need the PPU probably and bus.h. Okay. Let's see. So now I'm just pasting these down here. And let me go into OAM. You'll see OAM DMA transfer is uses this register FF46. That's the DMA start register. And writing to this register launches a DMA transfer. So the written value specify the transfer source divided by 1000. So It'll be these sources to this destination. And there's more good information here. The transfer takes 160 machine cycles. Um, let's see what else is down here. Yeah, I, I'd suggest uh, reading through this just to get a more solid grasp of how and why this stuff all works. But I, I won't uh, bog the video down with all that. So let's go into actually implementing these. So to start with, let's create a structure here for our context. DMA context. <clears throat> so it's going to have a couple of things. It's going to have a, a bool for if, uh, let's say, if it's active. We'll have a byte, which is the byte that it's currently on a value and a delay because we actually have a start delay so I'll put that in there and we'll have a static DMA context CTX okay so now for our start process this is when that register is written to so the first thing we're going to do is set active as true the byte is 0 and the start delay is 2 because we have two cycles before it starts and the value we're setting to that value passed in okay so then in our DMA tick so for every time this gets called we're gonna say is it active if it's not active 
then we're going to just return. Now we'll say, is the start delay done yet? So if there is a value for that, we're just going to decrement it and then return. So once that hits zero, essentially, then we'll be good to go to start our DMA processing. So what we're going to do is call that PPU OEM write, pass in the byte that it's starting at, and we're going to bus read the value time 0x100 plus the current byte that we're at. So if you remember that 0x100 is right here. The written value is the transfer source divided by 0x100. That's why we're multiplying it here. So this we're, so we're essentially writing the value we read from the bus to transfer the bytes. And now we're going to byte plus plus to move to the next byte. And active is going to be equal to whether a byte has reached 0xA0. If it's reached that, then we know it's done. And that's based on, let's see down here somewhere we have that. Yeah, see 9F, it goes from 0, 0 to 9F. So that's why we know that it's done once it's hit A0. So now, Going on to this DMA transferring function, we can just say, just return whether it's active or not. So that should be all we need to implement from that side of it. Now we need to kind of integrate it with the rest of the things here. So going in our I.O., if you remember the address, so if the address is 0xff46, that's when we know the DMA starts. So that's when we kick off a uh, DMA start. Maybe just print out some data here saying DMA start. And let's see. Now we need to update our EMU cycles function. I'm actually going to kind of redo this. I don't like the way I implemented it at first. So instead I'm going to do for each of these CPU cycles, then I'm going to have an inner loop, which is going to loop from 1 to 4, from 0 to 3, essentially. So in there, I'm going to do that CTX tick plus plus and timer tick. And then outside of that, that's where we're going to do our DMA tick because the DMA ticks once for every CPU cycle not four times like the timer does so we'll include DMA.h up here and let's see I think that should be it for that and see in the bus that's taken care of in here by going to the I.O. section so you know, let's clean this up a little bit this shouldn't be there some of these things I did to do's on are actually already done so another thing um, when we do a OAM read if DMA is transferring we need to not read it and just return 0xff it's just kind of a rule. You'll read that in that DMA data if you read more of the information there. So likewise, if we're writing to OAM while DMA is transferring, that's not allowed. So in here, we're just going to return and not call the PPO OAM write in that case. So now let's do another check and make. Looks like everything built fine. So if we run Tetris again, one thing you'll see is there's still no data here. <clears throat> and now if we look at the instructions that are running here, 
just kill it. It's kind of in an infinite loop reading FF44 and comparing it with this value 0x94. So, so yeah, that's the LDH is loading that value into so the value of FF44 into A and then comparing A with 94 and then jumping if it's not equal. So uh, it's in an infinite loop here looking for that and FF44 if you remember or I don't know if we've covered that yet <clears throat> yeah I don't think we covered it yet so it's it's in the IO range and it's actually the let's see go to IO read we can actually we can actually just put something in its place real quick just so we can see if DMA is working so I'm gonna say just return 0x94 if that value is red so let's make and run it again uh, now it's getting an error that cart right is not implemented and for some reason, you know, uh, the Tetris ROM should not really be calling cart right because it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, it's a ROM only cart. So I'm just going to comment this out. It's kind of inconsequential if it writes to it and we do nothing. So I'll allow that cart right to go through essentially. So let's again, actually another thing is it might be multiple values. So... Let me go to it. So this LCD status is the is the register. Or yeah, let's look at scrolling. FF44. That's the register there. That's the LY register. So let's just create a temporary value for it. Call it LY equals zero. And I'll return the value of LY plus plus, because eventually it's going to check other values as well. So I'm just going to have it infinitely keep incrementing it and rolling over from 0 to 255 that's just kind of a hack and when we're finished in this DMA tick I'm gonna print DMA done and just sleep for say two seconds just so we can see something happened so let's make run it DMA done oh all right and it's printing the stuff but then it's clearing it so uh we can see it's printing and clearing the data and if you look at this information you can see it's actually um, the Tetris uh, intro screen it's got several different pieces of that intro screen I'm stopping it here so uh, I think this is gonna be a good stopping point um, we covered quite a bit I mean starting off with the PPU RAM OAM RAM how to display individual tiles and all that and displaying it in a debug window um, it might look like we're close to getting ready to do like the full PPU but this is really kind of just the start just to show you how how the tiles are stored and what they look like there's really a lot to the PPU which we'll start on in the next video um, and I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something if you did like comment subscribe join our uh, discord server and thanks for watching